warning for those who have not seen this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Diamond is Unbreakable. Kira Yoshikage is going to do battle with Shigechi, and it's not so much a battle as it is a thorough ass-kicking, because Shigechi officially goes boom. Would it be too cheesy to say that this was an explosive episode of Diamond is Unbreakable? What I will go ahead and say is this. I'm really glad that I was actually able to predict what Kira's powers are going to be. His stand, the Killer Queen, does seem to have the ability to make things explode. Or, more to be fair, it actually has the ability to uh, touch an object, and if someone else ever touches that, the explosion will go into their body, causing a huge chain reaction, causing them to just explode and implode on themselves with no recollection of what was there before. It leaves no evidence behind. And that's why this guy has never been caught. Whenever he freaking kills a victim, he just uses his killer queen, and poof, they're gone. And unfortunately, that means that Shigechi is going to meet his maker in this episode. And honestly, I felt really bad for the little spud. I mean, he's a character that at first I didn't really care for him. Now, I've really grown attached to his character, and the fact that he's so important to the storyline here is amazing, because he's actually brought all of the main characters of the series together. His death has sent an entire ripple through this series. The way that Kira is actually able to utilize Killer Queen is awesome. And speaking of Killer Queen itself, I love the design. It's very similar to, say, Star Platinum or uh, even uh, Crazy Diamond, except that it has these, like, cat-like features. It even has the ability to punch really, really fast, just like those other characters. But its default ability is, of course, to be able to make things explode. He initially tricks Shigechi by giving him this coin, which, as soon as he touches it, sends this huge chain reaction throughout his body, and it just destroys his face breaking his nose, pushing his brain all throughout his skull. Safe to say Shigechi gets fucked up. It almost seems as if Shigechi is actually going to escape. I was really hoping he was going to, especially after Kira threatened by the fact that he was going to end up killing his parents. So Shigechi uses this great plan with Harvest where there's this huge explosion and then he actually goes over to these bushes and all of the Harvest stands actually pick up a leaf and they put it over their body and they cover Shigechi entirely. So he actually looks like a bush and then he has another one of his stands start to run around the corner, which he thinks is actually going to end up tricking Kira. However, this is not the case. You have Shigechi who walks into this school who's completely bleeding, his face looks completely fucked up, and none of the students are helping him! It's so freaking ridiculous! All the girls just look at him, they're like, Ooh, don't mess with that guy! There is a child bleeding out in the middle of a freaking high school! Someone do something! Someone call the police! But it all comes to an explosive end when Shigechi actually touches this doorknob right as he's about to meet Josuke and Okuyas, and he can see in the reflection of the window, there is Kira with his killer queen, and he uses his ability to touch this doorknob. So all of that power ends up transferring into Shigechi, causing him to explode and die. We even get this official confirmation because we get to go back to Raimi and her dog, and she can actually see the soul of Shigechi exploding in the sky as it starts to go away. It's a heartbreaking scene, to say the least, but like I said, the scene is really important because it brings together all of the characters from the series, even the ones who don't even really seem all that important. And I even love the fact that Tony Trendy is back. Like, basically all of the main stand users are here together. They discuss everything that's going on. The fact that there's this ghost girl and her dog and there's been this killer in town for years. And they're going to have to stick together if they want to find out the mystery of who the killer is going to be. The thing is, though, Shigechi might have actually left them something really important. It looks like there was this button that was left behind in all of the destruction. And they take this button and they take it to this tailor, which is the guy who actually created the coat for Kira himself. The problem is, Kira also thought that they were going to do this, and he decides to go to his tailor all at the same time, and that leads to another super fucked up scene. And I'm not even counting the fact that Kira broke up with his old girlfriend and decided to find a brand new one, which is to say he killed a woman, cut her hand off, and he's having breakfast with her. But during his break, he decides to go get himself a brand new jacket with a brand new button, and then you have Koichi and Jotaro who've actually found this place, and they're finally about to get the name of the killer. It's about to be revealed. There's a tag on the jacket, it's going to reveal the name, and right as they're about to see it, the tailor's hand suddenly just explodes and looks like something has shot through it. 
Apparently the Killer Queen has another ability where it's able to create this small little tank which can make things explode and even shoot explosives from it. And I love the visual of the fact that this guy can't see the stand but he can actually see the tire treads running over his shoulder when suddenly this thing just destroys his hand and then goes inside of his mouth causing this huge fucking explosion which is causing Jotaro and Koichi to have to run away without getting to see who the killer is. It's so frustrating and yet at the same time, just like the last couple of episodes which have featured Kira, you kind of don't want him to get caught all of the same time. Like, he's a villain, but you're really interested to see how far he can actually go with getting away with all of this. But with all of these powerful stand users, Josuke and Jotaro in particular, I honestly think they're going to be able to bring this guy down. Especially Jotaro himself, who not only has his star platinum, but also has the power of the world as well. So, there's really nothing from stopping him from just simply stopping time and just completely wailing on this dude. Although, you have to be really careful because you never really know what the Killer Queen is going to touch and what it's going to make explode. So you have to tread really lightly around this guy. He's a very different villain than, say, Dio or even Cars from, like, the first couple of seasons of JoJo. But that's what I love so much about him. He's just this regular guy who's a killer who just so happens to have a killer stand. The Killer Queen! So what's the rundown on this week's episode of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? A moment of silence for Shigechi, please! Okay, this week's episode was fucking crazy. It was so damn entertaining. Despite the fact that Shigechi himself was killed, getting to finally see Killer Queen's powers was awesome. I love the look of this thing. I love the various changes it goes through. Like when it manifests for the first time, it just looks kind of like this creepy skeleton covered in this purple shadow. And then it slowly transforms into this humanoid cat-like thing, which is just so awesome looking. I really love it. I love the fact that it has multiple abilities as well, which is something we're starting to see a lot more with the stand powers. They don't just have like their single default ability. They have like these different variants and things that they can use. And the fact that he can infuse objects to make them explode or the fact that he can send out this like tiny little tank object is insane and I have a feeling he probably has a few more tricks up his sleeve very similar to what Koichi can do with his stands where it has the multiple acts with different abilities and aside from the death of Shigechi my favorite thing about this episode was simply seeing all of the characters come together and I mean just about every single character that we've seen in the series that has a stand power actually meets Raimi in this episode and I really love that it also makes me reflect on the series as a whole and made me realize this series didn't really have too many just like clear-cut villains. Like a lot of the people that they fought against ended up becoming their allies. And I really do think they're going to need some help going up against uh, Kira. It's just, how powerful can this one guy be? I mean, they're really building him up quite a bit. There's going to have to be situations where the characters are going to have to be separated. Otherwise, they could all just wail on him at once with their crazy stand powers. I mean... Think about it, if like Jotaro, Josuke, Okuyas, and even Yukako and Koichi came in, they could just throw their stand powers at him doing all of this crazy shit. Hell, freaking Jotaro alone, he could just stop time and just wail on him. Like, I'm really interested to see how he's going to try and outsmart all of these people who are now out to get him. It's no longer a mystery, they know there's a killer in town, they know he has a stand power, and things are only going to get crazier from here. This is probably the beginning of what I think is my favorite arc from Diamond is Unbreakable thus far. That's not to say that some of the other villains from the series weren't great, like Okuyas' brother or even Akira Otoishi, but man, Kira Yoshikage is a fantastic villain, and I cannot wait to see more of his evolution in these last couple of episodes and how he's going to actually contend with Josuke and his group of incredibly badass stand users. So... Great episode right here, to say the frickin' least. I absolutely loved it. I have zero complaints on this one with all of the good animation, the awesome explosive action scenes, the drama, and the return of some classic characters, not to mention that final scene where that Taylor just gets completely destroyed and they're about to find out who the killer is! It's just so tense and it leaves you at the edge of your seat. And that is what is so awesome about this week's episode of JoJo. So I'm giving this one right here a 5 out of 5. Check it out, JoJo fans. You're definitely going to see something you like. But if any of you did watch this episode, make sure to tell me what you thought about it 
in the comments section below. I really want to hear from you guys. Did you like this episode? Did you not like this episode? Were you saddened by the death of Shigechi? What did you think of the Killer Queen stand and how are they even going to defeat this guy? Also, another reason why I love your comments is because I always get these cool little fun facts. Someone left a comment on my last review, which was actually mentioning that Shigechi's voice actor is the same guy who does the voice of Usopp from One Piece. And when I learned that, I could not just not hear it in this episode. All I hear is Usopp's voice coming out of this little spiky-headed kid. And it's really funny, and honestly, it's very fitting for a character like that. But, uh, again, just tell me what you guys thought about this episode. I really want to hear from that, and you can tell me in the comment section below. You guys are amazing for watching my review. I really appreciate it. If you would just take a second to hit that like button, I would really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you can see all of our latest anime, manga, and special videos as they are released. Thank you guys again for watching, and as always, stay dandy, baby.